the plane was becoming much more expensive to construct than had ever been uh, expected in the first place. Indeed, originally, uh, turn, thinking in terms of uh, manufacturing a much larger number of planes, the cost had been uh, estimated down as low as a million dollars a copy. Well, because of the disappearance of the hoped-for market, the cost was getting up to figures between 8 million and 12. In September 1958, the first blow fell. The Prime Minister announced that because of the rapid development of missiles, the government was not going to complete the full Arrow program. Crawford Gordon chose to believe the Arrow would not be cancelled. I want to stress most emphatically that the Arrow program has not been cancelled, nor has it been decided not to put it into production. On the contrary, the Prime Minister's statement says the program is to continue. As it now stands, it involves the building of 37 aircraft and an appropriate number of engines. This situation remains unchanged, and we are convinced that when the review takes place next March, the Arrow will be ordered into production. There was no change in government policy since the announcement... But General Perks spelled it out. The Sparrow missile and Astra fire control systems were to be dropped. Work would continue on the 37 pre-production models, and that was all. Everybody in the country uh, buried the arrow. They said it was all finished and so on, but uh, we weren't prepared to accept that, and we went about our business to try to find out. We spoke to the political people in Ottawa on the one hand and the military on the other and got two completely opposite. Now the company mounted a desperate campaign to reverse the decision. Fred Smy went to Washington to see the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force and extracted from him an extraordinary commitment. The U.S. Air Force was willing to fund the missile and fire control system as well as supplying test facilities as a virtual gift to the government of Canada and he authorized Smy to communicate this to the Minister of Defense Production, Raymond O'Hurley. On the next day, uh, I went to Mr. O'Hurley with a letter to this effect, and uh, I stood there while he read it. Uh, and that was the last we heard of that. No trace of that letter can be found in the National Archives. We have independent corroboration that it existed but no evidence that it was ever seen by the Minister of National Defense, for example. Indeed, Mr. Perks later denied that there had been any offer of financial help from the Americans. If an air of mystery hangs over many of the decisions in the Arrow story, it is because so many files are either incomplete or closed to the public for a 30-year period. In any case, it appears that the letter would have made no difference. The government had already made up its mind. February 20th, 1959. For the thousands of people who were thrown out of work that day, it would be known as Black Friday. More than 20 years later, the memories are still fresh and painful. Well, um, about 9.30 in the morning, um, one of the fellows in the office telephoned his broker, uh, just an ordinary uh, inquiry on some stock prices. And toward the end of the conversation, um, he said, so by the way, how's A.V. Row Canada doing today? And I have to bear in mind that uh, there was a tremendous feeling of pride of working at, uh, at Avro Aircraft and Veranda Engines at that time. People really enjoyed it, and they bought stock in the company um, in the hopes that they would, you know, succeed while the company succeeded. And uh, at any rate, the broker said, uh, let's see, A.V. Row Canada, oh, just a minute, there's something coming in over the ticker tape. And see. Waited a couple of minutes, came back, and he says, we've just got a thing over the ticker tape that says that the Canadian Prime Minister has just announced in the House of Commons that the um, Avro Aero and Lorenda Iroquois programs are to cease immediately. Um, and that was the extent of the thing on the ticker tape. So the guy came back off the telephone, sort of quite shaken, obviously. be about 10.30, 10, just after 10 in any event. As I stepped out in the hall, coming running down the corridor, very white in the face was Joe Morley, who was my vice president of sales. 
followed by Alan Hoare, who was the DDP representative in the, in the uh, company. And Morley said, the Prime Minister has just announced in the House of Commons that the Arrow, the Iroquois, have been cancelled. Two hours later, uh, around noon or after, um, Mr. Plant came on the loudspeaker system and said that everything had been cancelled, every single contract the company had on the Arrow and, uh, and on the, or on the, en the Iroquois engine. And he read the telegram, our cable, which was sent. And um, he said that um, under the circumstances and with no other contracts to fall back on of the kind that they had been pressuring the government to let them begin and take men off the arrow to start work on. He had no alternative but to lay everyone off for the time being until they sorted out union priorities, uh, seniority, and what jobs they could salvage that could keep a few people busy, and uh, that they would be called back after this was sorted out. When I got there, all the executives, the ones that were left, uh, we're all standing around there with a drink in the hand. This is 10 o'clock in the morning. And some were partly loaded. And Gordon, uh, we're waiting for the telegram to arrive. We'd had it officially over the phone. And go, when it came, Gordon read it and he handed it to me and he said, somebody has got to take on that son of a bitch in Ottawa and I'm just the one to do it. Mr. Diefenbaker had said later that uh, the, the abrupt dismissal of 14,000 people was an attempt to embarrass the government. Yeah. Well, we were only an agent of the government. Uh, anyone with any knowledge of, of government contract procedure or industrial practice would know that we had no alternative. Uh, the men were to stop work then and they weren't to be paid then. There were no further costs to be incurred as far as the government was concerned. So you tell me what you do with 13,000 people with nothing to do. A sudden decision like this, it's, uh, it's gonna cause panic in the place. That's for sure. I mean, whose side is he on? Is he trying to break, the, he's trying to break the country, in my opinion. And $100 spent in, the, in this plant brings $65 back in taxes. That's been explained to all the public. He's gonna give all those hundreds to the states for why? Are they backing him? I would just like to say that I feel Mr. Diefenbaker has sold his country and his fellow Canadians down the river to American interests. I just have a couple of words to say to Mr. Diefenbaker. Be a Canadian, buy Canadian. Brampton is probably typical of scores of other Canadian towns. Population the cancellation created shockwaves in communities around the Avro plant. For CBC News, a young Morley Safer reported on its effects on the lives of workers and their families. themselves and their independence. But in fact, Brampton is dependent on one single industry. Small talk and gossip cover a single topic today, the end of the era. It's probably one of the more emotional uh, sort of experiences I've had in my life, I think, in a sense, because... Um, I think partly because of the tremendous personal involvement of everybody who worked there. there was a, um, I mean, if you can imagine secretaries uh, walking out from the design floor down the stairs, you know, with tears streaming down their faces and this sort of thing. And it wasn't just a few isolated ones, it was a lot of them, you know. It was, it was a very sort of emotional upheaval, I think. For weeks after that, people would wander into work just at a normal work time, just couldn't believe it had finished. You know, they'd walk around in the days almost. They'd come in and sit at the boards and walk around just as if nothing had happened. And there was about five, I don't recall the exact number, but about five of us left there to try and pick up the pieces and, and put the engineering together and package it and put it away so that it'd be left for posterity or burnt, maybe burnt.